As gold in the furnace, the Lord put his chosen to the test. As sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. And in due time, they will be honored. And grace and peace will be with the elect of God. Dear sisters and brothers, today is Wednesday of the ninth week in ordinary time. Today is the memorial of St. Charles Lawanga and his companions all martyrs. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My dear sisters and brothers, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sinfulness and failings and ask for God's loving pardon and peace. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have made the blood of martyrs the seed of Christians, mercifully grant that the field which is your church, watered by the blood shed by St. Charles Lawanga and his companions, may be fertile and always yield you an abundant harvest. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the beginning of the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God for the promise of life in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did as I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day. For this reason, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake but bear your share of hardship for the gospel with strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed preacher and apostle and teacher. On this account, I am, a suff- I am suffering these things, but I am not ashamed, for I know him in whom I have believed, and I am, and am confident that he is able to guard what has been entrusted to me until that day. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm is, To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. To you, I lift up my eyes who are enthroned in heaven. Behold, as the eyes of servants are on the hands of their masters. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. As the eyes of a maid are on the hands of her mistress, so are our eyes on the Lord our God till he hath pity on us. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to Jesus and put this question to him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first married a woman and died, leaving no descendants. So the second brother married her and died, leaving no descendants, and the third likewise. And the seven left no descendants. Last of all, the woman also died. At the resurrection, when they arise, whose wife will she be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, Are you not misled because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God? When they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage but they are like the angels in heaven. As for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God told him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not God of the dead, but of the living. You are greatly misled. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, today is the feast of St. Charles uh, Lawanga and his companions. They are known as the Ugandan martyrs. Let me share a little something with you about their life's journey and about their martyrdom. One of 22 Ugandan martyrs, Charles Lawanga is the patron of youth and Catholic action in most of tropical Africa. He protected his fellow pages, aged 13 to 30, from the homosexual demands of the Bagandan ruler Mwanga and encouraged and instructed them in the Catholic faith during their imprisonment for refusing the ruler's demands. For his own unwillingness to submit to the immoral acts and his efforts to safeguard the faith of his friends, Charles was burned to death at uh, Namugongo on June 3, 1886, by Mwanga's order. Charles first learned of Christ's teachings from two retainers in the court of Chief Mawalugunga, while a catechumen he entered the royal household as assistant to Joseph Mukaso, head of the court pages. On the night of Mukaso's martyrdom for encouraging the African youths to resist Moanga, Charles requested and received baptism. Imprisoned with his friends, Charles' courage and belief in God inspired them to remain chaste and faithful. Among the martyrs were pages, a catechist, judges, and chief, cruelly murdered. From the accounts of their deaths, we know they suffered greatly, but courageously, staunch in faith. These martyrs are among Africa's gifts to the church and in the tradition of the early African martyrs. They are now added to the annals of that Africa of earlier times, as Pope Paul VI noted in his homily at the massive canonization on October 18, 1964. Pope St. Paul VI also said on that occasion, these African martyrs herald the dawn of a new age. Africa has been washed by the blood of these latest martyrs, the first of this new age. Africa is reborn and independent. When Pope St. Paul VI canonized these 22 martyrs on October 18th in 1964, he referred also to the Anglican pages martyred for the same reason. 
This commentator notes that like Charles Luanga, we are all teachers and witnesses to Christian living by the examples of our own lives. We are called upon to spread the word of God, whether by word or deed, by remaining courageous and unshakable in our faith during times of great moral and physical temptation as we live as Christ lived. On his African tour in 1969, Pope Paul VI told 22 young Ugandan converts that being a Christian is a fine thing, but not always an easy one. We pray hopefully that their loyalty will inspire many others to live in the Christian faith. As we heard in the opening prayer this morning, their blood is the seed for African Christians of the present and future. Yet they are not just for Africans. All of us can take inspiration and courage from them. My dear sisters and brothers, recognizing that God always works for goodness beyond our imagination, we bring our needs to him. For the church, may God empower us in contributing to the transformation of the whole world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For governments around the world, may God guide their leaders to the truth, especially the truth of the dignity of every human person. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from any serious health or life circumstances, may the, Lord of, may the love of God, Christ console them in faith and trust. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those gathered here, may God open our minds and hearts to the work he is asking of us and grant us the grace to respond in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died in the hope of resurrection, may they rest in the peace of God's love, especially Virginia Ratchford. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear sisters and brothers, as we have done since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic in celebrating our celebration of the Eucharist in this manner, We've included in our prayers and in the daily intentions those of all whose lives have been affected by the virus, those whose lives have been lost due to COVID-19. We pray for all of those who wear uniforms, all of those who are first responders, all of those who are in the medical field, all of those who assist us in our daily endeavors to have life be a little more um, tolerable, a little more uh, at peace, a little more homelike, those who uh, work in grocery stores, who might be delivery people. We pray for all of those who are on the front lines of helping us to stem this pandemic. And we pray for the scientists and doctors who are hoping to find um, a vaccine or some kind of a cure that will assist us. Also in these last days, so many cities in the United States have been rioting. Uh, businesses have been lost. People have been injured. Uh, we pray for peace. We pray for all of those who look for ways to uh, enact uh, justice and who seek justice and peace in their communities will do so in a peaceful manner, realizing that violence and destruction rarely, if ever, brings about true peace or uh, a depth of concern for all of the community, including those who are most affected by the moments we find ourselves encountering where a loss of life seems to be unjust, where someone is um, finding themselves in a, in a situation, in a moment in which all of the powers that be around may not be acting and moving in manners that the larger community would hope for. We must be peaceful. We must pray for one another. That is not to say that the church doesn't ask us to stand up for the truth and that Jesus himself did just that. And so we pray for truth and for honesty, for justice and peace for all 
uh, in our world, in our country, and throughout the world. And so for all of these special intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of infinite goodness, hear our prayers today. Some we speak aloud, others lie in the silence of our hearts. But we are confident and we place these needs before you just as the blood of the martyrs Charles Luanga and his companions brought about faith to an entire country, a country that looks to their martyrdom and stands up for justice or attempts to do so as best as they can. But these martyrs intercede on our behalf and for all who seek justice for the least. Hear our prayers. We know and are confident that you know what we need and that you will grant all that we need through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. We offer you sacrifice, O Lord, humbly praying that as you granted the blessed martyrs grace to die rather than sin, so you may bring us to minister at your altar in dedication to you alone, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyrs, Charles Lawanga and his companions, poured out like Christ's to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, 
we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Blaise, our Bishop, with all the bishops, all the clergy, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Charles Lawanga and his companions, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers, let us join our voices together now to pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the way that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another now a sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
How precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of His holy ones. Let us pray. We have received this divine sacrament, O Lord, as we celebrate the victory of your holy martyrs. May what help them to endure torment, we pray, make us in the face of trials steadfast in faith and in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, let us turn now to our Blessed Mother and let us pray for all of those who are suffering during these days for uh, the endeavors that the church is making for us to soon return it to one another. Let us lift up to the care of our Blessed Mother as well all of those whose faith has uh, wandered or wavered during these days or who might not regularly be participating in the table of the Lord's uh, Eucharistic celebration uh, in times prior to this or even when we return that our brothers and sisters and all of us will soon return here to the table of Mary's Son. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to proclaim the good news of the Lord. Thanks be to God.